In this lecture, we will be starting the time domain analysis of the system. In this direction, uh, two important concepts we will be studying. One is the transient response and is the steady state response of the system. For the time transient response analysis, we will be considering the PD control system and we will compare uh, the same with the uh, standard transfer function and we will come up with some relation between the the damping ratio and natural frequency of the system. Then we will study how the damping ratio is going to affect the system poles, closed loop system poles. And then we will study how the system, uh, response of the closed loop control system is going to affect based on the damping ratio, under which we will be studying the under damped response or um, critically damped response or uh, the over damped response. We will be studying those. Then we will conclude the lecture. Hello everyone, this is the lecture number 16. As you mentioned in the last lecture, in this lecture we'll be talking on uh, the time domain specification of a system. Under time domain specification, as you discussed, time domain specifications, there are two components we need to study under this. One is the Transient, transient specifications, and second is steady state specifications. Uh, let me revise again. What are these? So suppose we have this is the current attitude of the aircraft angle. This is my T. And if you want to track the desired attitude, for example, theta desired T, and if the aircraft responds like this, for example, so here, at till the steady state part, is called transient part, transient response. And once the system reaches to the steady state with some error, it's under the steady state response. And we'll start with the transient specification, how we can come up with some kind of uh, specifications which can help us to modify the transient response. Here, how we're gonna improve the behavior of the response, like the uh, reducing the overshoot, undershoot. How we can reach to the steady state very fast. So we'll have some specification or some kind of uh, terms which will help us to modify this response. Let's start. So first start transient response. Here we'll be discussing how the res system respond to our step command. So here will be the specification will be coming up for the theta desired a step command, step command. But you can, uh, theta danger can be, for example, maybe 60 degree, if you, 60 degree, for example, so if you multiply the step command, you can get 60 degree. Let me define that you can understand. So here, the specifications, the specifications are often, described in terms of in terms of of the response of closed loop system closed loop control system 
to a init step function. Or command. Suppose we have this is prime axis and this is R of T, and we'll be assuming unit step function. This is one, and the condition is R of T equal to one when T is greater than zero, less than, equal to greater than zero, and zero when t is less than zero. So when this we apply this kind of command to the closed loop control system, and we'll be, based on this, we'll be deriving the specifications. Also, the standard PD control, what you have done before, the standard PD control is E of T. If you remember, we had KP E of T plus KD E dot. And if you here, actually, if you notice R of T equal to one when T is greater than equal to zero. That is equal to zero. That's one. So uh, it is basically a constant function, and we can write this equation K P R of T minus Y of T plus K D R dot minus Y dot. Since R is constant here, we can modify this expression K P. E, this is clearer, KD, Y dot. R is constant, so R dot will be zero. And the modified closed loop control system, the block diagram, of the modified closed loop control system, we can have, here we are having RS, and let me draw the figure, then I'll explain. This is KP. And we are having summing point MDS and the summed output goes to the plant, which is one upon I S square, and this is output from this. We can denote y of s. If you notice carefully, this is the term. This term we can write this is kd. We can write kd is the derivative of y. We can write as input to the summing block, minus. This is plus, this is plus. So based on this function, based on this function, we can write this loop. And we have another outer, this is basically inner loop. And the outer loop we can draw. Outer loop. It's basically minus and plus. So this is error function. So based on this theory control, we can come up the figure like the closed loop diagram like this. So here is two loops. One is inner loop like this. 
another is outer loop like this. So for the inner loop, we can have a torsion function. And before that, we have another assumption that since we are going to define the specification for the step command and with the application of step command, how the output response is going to respond. So in that case, we are going to have the relation between the output and input reference signal and YS. So this part we can assume to be zero. So we are going to have terms of function uh, between RS and YS. So here, so let me write the response, response to a step command is the attitude angle of the aircraft is relevant at this stage. So we set the disturbance MDS to zero and WS to zero. This is the assumption we can take. And from figure this let me draw this figure one. So from figure one, we can come up with the transfer function for the inner loop. So from the inner loop also function, figure two, the transfer function, we can write GP of S equal to one by I S square plus Yes, this is very simple. We can use the same logic what you have done before. And so this is okay. Let me write the another part, then I'll explain. And the effective control transfer function we can write. GC of S equal to KP. So here, this is the GC of S. Okay, only KP is there. Now, the modified, the modified block diagram of Figure one can be can be drawn as this is the summing point where we are I'm applying R of S and the we are having E of S which is going to the controller KP. And from this, we can write, no need to have summing point here because we already have the transfer function for the inner loop. And also we have assumed the disturbance to be zero. So we can write the inner transfer function here, which is one upon I S squared plus KDS. This is output y of s and this is the feedback so we can come up the toss of function like this for the pd control system see the closed loop diagram and the transfer function from this figure this let me figure 
we got two. The transfer function, transfer function from figure two, we can write. Let me let me write TSP the transfer function. You can write also GS, whatever. So T is, I'm denoting here T is the transfer function which relates between the RS and YS. So GP of S, GC of S, one plus GP of S, GC of S. And you can substitute the values of the corresponding transfer functions. So if you substitute GP is here, basically you can write, uh, GC is here KP and GP is one by IS square plus KDS. KDS and divide by one plus KP into one upon I S square plus KDS. You can write. And from this, we can write the complete transfer function KP by I divided by S square plus KD by I S plus KP by I. So this is the transfer function for the, for the closed loop system. And now we will define, so let's define omega n square equal to kp by i and two zeta omega n equal to kd by i. So here, uh, let me write here, omega n is the, the undamped, uh, undamped natural frequency and zeta is damping ratio. We can write and denote it. And if you notice carefully, if you can control natural frequency or if you can uh, come up with some gains, KP and KD, we can change the natural frequency and damping ratio. Because we can write from this, also you can write KP equal to I into omega n square and KD equal to, we can write I to zeta omega n. So if you can change the value, some optimal values from controls techniques, or we'll be talking later, very close time. So if you choose very suitably this KP and KD, we can change the damping ratio and natural frequency. So we can change the speed of the system. Also, we can change the overshoot, undershoot of the system because natural frequency talks about the how speed my response will be. And damping talks about how fast I can go to, to the desired value with less overshoot, how I can damp out the overshoot, undershoot in the response. So we have to suitably choose KP and KD from the control designs or control, uh, I mean, whatever the concept will be, will be having using that, we can come up with some kind of relation through which we can change the response properties. So let's go step by step. So here in terms of, in terms of this parameter, we can write, Based on this parameter, we can write this. Let me define this equation number one. Equation number one, based on 
based on omega n square and two theta omega n equation one can be expressed as expressed as T s equal to omega n square divided by s square plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n square. So this is, if you notice carefully, this is the second order system. Second order system. So why the second order? Because the highest power in the denominator polynomial is two. And generally we define the order of the system based on the highest power powered in the denominator polynomial. So this is second order system. And also we sometimes call this is standard second order system. If you refer any control system book, generally we use this kind of expression for defining the second order system. Now, from so let me define this equation number. This is equation number two. And from equation number two, from equation two, the characteristic equation, we can write s squared plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n squared equal to zero. And the poles, S1, 2 will be minus zeta omega n plus minus omega n root over zeta square minus one, we can write. So based on these poles, we will come up with three different conditions. Based on the polarity of zeta, we'll have different kind of location of the poles in the system. So there are three cases. There are three different cases for the different value of values of damping ratio. Damping ratio zeta. So let's go step by step. Case one, when zeta value lies between zero and one, when zeta values lies between zero and one, the system is called, the system is called under dam. So this is the condition for the under dam system when zeta lies between zero and one. So in this case, if it is zeta is in this range, then, then if you notice here, this term will be imaginary. If zeta is less than one, then we can write, right? In this case, in this case, zeta square minus one is imaginary. And there will be two complex conjugate poles. So what are these? So in this case, the poles would be S equal to minus zeta omega n plus minus, let's assume z is the complex value, omega n one minus zeta square. So these are the poles for this under dam system. And if you locate this pole in S plane, the location of the poles 
of the above poles above poles in S plane we can write so there is complex conjugate so negative is here minus zeta omega n and we have to complex part also so this is the real of S this is the imaginary of S and we have complex conjugate force can be located here and here and this this is actually the value of omega n root over 1 minus zeta square and this value we can write minus omega n 1 minus zeta square so it is clear that if the system is under dam the response will be uh, something oscillatory behavior response uh, so we'll have for this kind of response just a moment we'll have how the response will be look like and let's look the case this is case one and case two let's look case two in case two, okay, here, let me write the note here. These poles lead to a decaying oscillatory behavior at frequency omega d. So what is omega d here? So omega d, we are right, we can denote this expression as a omega d, damped natural frequency, or we can say damped frequency. Uh, why, if we write, uh, you can write this expression minus theta omega n plus minus say we can write omega d so where omega d we can write omega n root over one minus theta square so this is the damped natural frequency why because damping factor in the right hand side that exists in the damping factor exists in the right hand side so that's why it is called it, with this frequency, the response will be decaying. Uh, case two, when zeta equal to one, and when zeta equal to one, the system is called critically damped. So when zeta equal to one this is critically damped, let, let's look how the response will look like or how the pole location will be in the S plane. So if zeta equal to one, we can see that this part is going to zero. I mean, this part is going to zero. So we can write, there will be two poles at the same point. So we have two repeated poles. In this case, the poles are, we can say, S equal to, we can write minus omega n and minus omega n. And the location of these poles in the S plans, we can write, there's two repeated four at, S equal at can write minus omega n. And uh, so this is the critical critically damped system. And let's look the other case, other situation here, case three, case three. When zeta is greater than one. So this condition is called over damp because damping is quite high. It is more than one. 
So this system, this system is called over dam. Over dam. And in this case, in this case, root over zeta square minus one is real because zeta is greater than one. And hence there are there are two distinct negative negative real poles. And what are those? So S will be minus zeta omega n plus minus omega n root over zeta square minus one. So these are the poles which are negative real poles. And if you uh, see these poles in S plan, this is my S plan. And these poles, this is the imaginary of S, is the real of S. And one pole will be here, another pole will be here. So this pole will be minus zeta omega n plus omega n root over one minus zeta squared. And this pole will be minus zeta omega n minus omega n root over zeta square minus one. So this is quite stable system. And now we, let's have a this let's look the response for the defined value values of damping ratio, how the response will be look like. So this is my the response of the system. This is time axis. This is, for example, y of t, the response, for example. And since we are considering the step command, this is the step command. So here, r of s equal to one upon s, or r of, this is r of t. This is the desired response my system should follow. And we have this kind of response. And so in this case, this is the value of zeta when it is in between zero and one. So this response called, we can say under dam, response. If we little bit increase the damping ratio, let's assume 0 0.1, then system will have something like this. Very minimal something like this. And this is the case when damping ratio is 0 0.7. So this is also oscillatory, but uh, the magnitude of the oscillation is very less, reduced. And let's have the case when damping ratio is one only. So in this case, it will go like something like this, and very small oscillation, then it will settle down. So this is the case when damping ratio is one. And let's have another case when damping ratio is greater than one. In this case, the response will go straight away. Something like this. So this is the case when damping ratio is, for example, 1.4. So as we increase the damping ratio, the oscillation is reduced. Other there are other effects also we'll be talking later. In this lecture, what you have learned actually. If you increase the damping ratio, the oscillation will be reduced. But there will be another problem like uh, shuttling time will increase. If you decrease the damping ratio, oscillation will be more. 
but steady state error will be reduced that we'll be discussing in the coming lecture. So this is how we analyze the system and we connect how the damping ratio and natural frequency plays a major role in the response of the system. Because this is how we'll be designing the autopilot, how we can modify the response of the aircraft. If it is position or attitude, how we can come up with very precise observations with the help of this kind of techniques. So let's stop it here. I will continue from the next lecture and we'll define the specification how we can relate the system response to the time domain specification. Thank you.